If you want to grow a lot of mushrooms, you got to process a lot of substrate. Here in our incubation room, I have over 1,400 pounds of substrate that we process at one time. We're pasteurizing about 140 bags at a time, 12-pound uh, bags, and each one of those will produce 2.5 pounds of mushrooms per flush, on average, two flushes. So we're looking at 300 to 500 pounds of mushrooms a week. How do we do it? It's not that, it's not that simple. It's not that complicated. This is my steam tank I built here in my backyard. It allows us to process 1,400 pounds of substrate at a time. It is a 300 gallon stock tank from Tractor Supply that I've outfitted with insulation and I've cut a lid out of plywood and then we just seal it by putting cinder blocks on top. It's actually running right now so you might be able to see some steam coming out of there. This is the boiler for the steam tank. It's a regular brewer's kettle that I've outfitted with a float valve right here so the water keeps coming in, it doesn't run out of water, and it boils water to provide the steam tank with steam and just runs continuously for over 720 minutes to complete the pasteurization process. You can build one of these yourself using, uh, I've seen a lot of really creative methods. I just chose to use a brewer's kettle uh, because it already had the one and a half inch NPT fittings that I needed so I didn't have to drill too many holes, just one for the water. And then of course I insulated it to save energy and I put the bricks on top of it to weigh it down to keep the steam going only where I want and to keep the steam from escaping. There's also a gasket right around here. It's a furnace gasket that you typically use for furnaces but it works great for this application. I tried using a silicone based gasket but it would not seal properly and I had to keep redoing the gasket so this is the solution I came up with. This is the controller for the steam tank and the boiler. It is from auburninstruments.com. You can pick one up. They're made for substrate pasteurization. They're for mushroom production. So they're already ready to go. It was very simple to set up. Pretty simple PID controller to program. Um, and it does everything that I needed to do and it automates the whole process. So essentially the top number shows the temperature reading from the temperature probe that's in the steam tank inside one of the substrate bags. So we have a good clear temperature reading. Uh, it'll get that up to 200 degrees and then we start the countdown of 720 minutes. So the bottom number is how many minutes are remaining in the cycle. Now I have a separate boiler and steam tank for a variety of reasons. The first reason, it's more safe. When I built a few prototypes with the heating element boiler in the same unit as a steam tank, uh, like a Bubba's Barrels kind of situation, um, I had issues where I would be melting the bags at the bottom or uh, it could be more hazardous. So I decided to separate the two units um, and that's worked really well for me. But of course, do it works for you. I'm not saying that that's not a good design. The second reason, it allows us to have scalability. So originally we had a 55 gallon steam tank to use with our boiler. Now we have a 300 gallon steam tank to use with our boiler. And it allows us to scale that up one more time if we need to. Uh, and kind of, it's more modular. So we're able to interchange the parts a lot easier. So really the scalability is a big reason for me. There can be a lot of conflicting information or it can be very confusing when you're looking into making your own steam sterilizer or atmospheric sterilizer. Uh, and there could be a lot of questions, but I really think that the best thing you can do is just experiment with the design that works for your needs, for your outputs and for your environment. Um, it's pretty cheap to get like a, a barrel. You can get one refurbished for $20, even if it's not stainless steel. I would recommend starting with just a steel barrel, even though they rust and and they can not last as long. It's gonna be cheaper. I think um, if you go with a stainless steel barrel, that's really expensive. If you're in the States, you're looking at 900 to $1,000 for a new stainless steel barrel. Um, that's actually something we started with because I thought it would last longer, but we ended up outgrowing it within a few months of production. So we were only able to fit 28 of our uh, 10 pound substrate bags in there at a time. And uh, we quickly outgrew that. Um, also, we got a stock tank that's galvanized steel. It's not stainless, so it does rust, but it, it's not an issue. It's, it's not a big enough issue for us to justify spending the cost on a, on a stainless steel um, steam tank. So definitely, if I could do it again, I would have gotten just a regular steel uh, barrel because they're just cheaper. And when you're growing mushrooms, it's best to just save costs. It's with any business. Just save costs and buy something that's... Um, going to be worth your money. I don't think it's justifiable to buy a stainless steel barrel. So that's just my two cents. But as someone who's done it 
and I built three or four of these steam tanks. This is the design that's worked the best for me. Um, and I want to thank Cactus Hat Mushrooms Joe for he has a very similar build that uh, and his videos have been exponentially helpful in helping me with this. Also, Tom from Oak and Spore Mushrooms in New Zealand, very similar design. So check those guys out if you haven't already. That's been hugely influential in my design for this. Um, ultimately, if you're experimenting with building a steam tank, do what works for you. Everyone's going to have different needs. Um, and feel free to reach out with any questions. Um, I'm happy to share the information. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.